there and welcome back to the Hall City Fan Central YouTube channel where today I do have the West Bromwich Albion versus Hull City prediction. The game will be taking place tomorrow over in West Brom. I'll have a match day vlog out for that so stay tuned to this YouTube channel and you'll get that in your subscription feed tomorrow. But on to my prediction. So in this video I'll be going over my Hull City predicted lineup. Um, all the information about the meetings that we've had with West Brom in um, years prior and then also my official prediction on what I think the scoreline will be and who I think will score. So let's first break it into the Hull City predicted lineup. Okay, so starting off in net is the man, the myth, the legend, Matt Ingram. Yes, he has had a phenomenal season so far. He's kept us in all of our uh, battles so far. He is, I think, leading the league still in saves per match, which is a phenomenal stat. Um, and although Nathan Baxter, I believe, is now fit, he has been on the bench for a few games. He has been out warming up with the squad um, before the games. He, I don't think at the moment he deserves to take that spot away from uh, Matt Ingram. I think that his, his start to the season has been phenomenal. As soon as Matt Ingram's form dips and dips for a few games, I think Nathan Baxter might get a shot in. Um, but yeah, I think Matt Ingram starts the net and it should, should definitely be like this until he has that dip in form, as I mentioned. Moving on to a back four now. Yes, I've gone for the, the back four rather than the back five, which just wasn't helping the squad whatsoever. So our two um, full-backs, we do have Louis Coyle and Callum Elder. I thought Louis Coyle was phenomenal in the game against Burnley. If you haven't seen that vlog, check it out on the YouTube channel. But I think he, he was phenomenal against um, Burnley. He was moving stuff down that right-hand side. Uh, where Simon Esch was lacking, he was making up for that. Moving across to the left, moving all about that defensive line. And also helping produce some of the attacks, which was nice to see. Callum Elder, on the other hand, he did also have a, a very good game, don't get me wrong. But I feel that he really, really needs to get sorted into this um, pushing on business. Because he has been pushing on at moments, but for the majority of the game, he's been sitting back too deep, I feel. For, for what Shot is trying to do with, with his wing-backs, trying to process them into the attack, he has been sitting a bit too deep for my liking. So hopefully he can push on and um, sort of help on with these attacks. Um, but yeah, moving on to the, the uh, big centre-backs. We do have big old Jacob Graves, who has signed on for a contract extension until 2026, which is nice to see. I know a few Middlesbrough fans were definitely fuming at that news, but well-loving life, one of the uh, best centre-backs of in the league and one of the best uh, youth projects that is going on at the moment in the Championship. Also, the other centre-back, Tobias Figueiredo. Uh, he had a decent game against Burnley. He uh, put a few tackles in, a few good blocks in that were actually essential to keeping us into the game. I think he made one um, goal line or near goal line clearance at one point in the, um, in the first half, I believe it was. So, it's fantastic that and uh, I hope that his good form continues and continues to build as uh, he progresses through the season. In midfield now, although Jean-Michael Sarri is meant to be back, I don't think that he'll be fit enough to certainly start this game. He may come on as a sub um, in the game, depending on what's happening, depending on how fit he is. Uh, but yeah, I still don't think he is fit enough, um, according to what Shot has been saying in interviews and stuff. So I've gone for Alfie Jones again. He has been doing a phenomenal job filling in with Jean-Michael Sarri. Although we do have Ryan Woods um, now at the club, he plays a bit more of a, 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 a well-rounded central midfield role. And I don't see him starting this game. So yeah, Alfie Jones pushes on from that um, form that he has had recently with Jean-Michael Sarri's um, absence. Also in midfield, we do have Ozan Tufan. Yes, the man, the myth, the legend, along with Matt Ingram. Uh, Ozan Tufan. He did score a, uh, a, nice, a nicely worked goal against Burnley. Um, and he's, he's, been doing, he's been doing a few shifts, although when he came to the club, he was, he was labelled as lazy, um, a wash-up. Um, a few Watford fans were even saying that we're now going to get relegated just because we signed him. And... I see us second in the league. I know it's only, what, four games in. But Ozan Tufan has been the figurehead of our attacks. He's been doing a phenomenal job this season so far. And I hope that continues to build, especially in this game. And then the third man in midfield is 
the 50 grand man, Regan Slater. Um, I haven't been singing his praises over the first few weeks of the season, but my God, his form has just excelled, hasn't it? Um, in that Burnley game, mm, he was doing some magical stuff on that ball. And it only cost us 50 grand. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I, I think it's now start, uh, time to start singing his praises from me. He has been doing a phenomenal job this season so far. I think he has increased from where, where he was last season. So, well done to you, Regan Slater. Moving on to our attack now. This is where the lineup does differ a bit. Because obviously, Ali Arsai Maneshi didn't have the strongest game against Burnley. And also did go off injured in the, th in the second half. Um, which has now appeared to be a hamstring issue. And he'll be out for four to six weeks at minimum. But no one really knows too much yet. Um, especially as the recovery process hasn't really started. So yeah, Ali Arsai Maneshi is out. And I do think Randall Williams will take that spot on the right wing, uh, moving into a sort of cam roll. Um, with with his a phenomenal uh, performance against Bradford, one of the shining um, shining lights in that performance, I think that he deserves it. He's been coming on in a few um, substitutions in the championship uh, in the past few games, and I think he deserves a start, uh, especially with this um, Aliasa Manesh uh, injury. I think Randall Williams deserves a start. We haven't got the new youngster in the new number 10 from Arsenal in yet, so I don't think that he'll make an appearance in this game. So I think Randall Williams makes a start, and I would love to see it. He's, he's one of my favourite um, players at the club at the moment, just because of what what you can see he wants himself to be. Um, he, he sees he wants himself to be one of these top players who makes it into the first team, who scores goals, sets up plays, assists, and all this, and he's just he's just working on it, and you can see the hard work ticking away. And also in the attack, we do have Benjamin Tete. He didn't have a phenomenal game against Burnley. I felt that he was one of the uh, one of the lacking players. I think that his mistake did actually lead to their goal, uh, their equalising goal, but uh, it was well worked from Burnley. Don't get me wrong on that. But yeah, Benjamin Tete is is. I think that he just needs a bit of time to work on how he is going to implement himself into this um, style that Shot has put him into. Because obviously, I, f I feel that he's a, a very like Harry Kane esque uh, number 10 striker. And playing him on the left wing, asking him to track back, it's getting some of the same issues that we are getting with, um, with Ali Asai Manesh on how that they don't know really how to track back. But I think Asai Manesh has been working on that, he's been improving, and hopefully that works with Benjamin Tate as well. And then there's only one man left. The Oscar um, award goes to Oscar Estupinian. Yes, it's the joke that Hull City keep on making. But yeah, Estupinian up top uh, for us. Hopefully, he'll get a few more headers. And my God, that header against Burnley set up Ozan to Frank Goal. Just the, the flick on. Um, I saw him working on his headers in the build-up. And uh, it, wa it was worth it, wasn't it? So yeah. That completes my starting 11 for Hull City. Okay, so moving on from that, we do have some of the previous interactions that we've had with West Brom. So obviously the last time we met them was in last season, and it, we did suffer a 2-0 defeat at home in a bit of an uninspiring performance. Uh, it was um, two goals from Grant for them, uh, one penalty and then one goal in the first half. But last memorable match, I've got to say, that we played at uh, the Hawthorns West Brom's ground was a 4-2 um, loss for us, uh, but it was a memorable, memorable game. We did get two goals, one from Malik Wilkes, who uh, has really, really dipped off in form since then, and then another one from Stewart, who has uh, obviously now left the club. So, yeah, 4-2, hopefully that works again, but on the other way around, uh, but you, we, we don't really know. Uh, obviously, recent form for West Brom hasn't been the best they have started this season, with no win so far from the first four games. They're currently sitting 22nd in the league, but obviously it's only four games in. You can't really judge um, league positions at this point. Meanwhile, we're sitting in second. Can you judge league positions at this point? Uh, yeah, we have picked up uh, two wins and two draws. Obviously, they're without a win and three draws and one loss. So yeah, a very, very tight fixture, I feel this will be, considering West Brom coming into this season before playing the games. They were one of the promotion favourites, with definitely to, definitely uh, favourites to finish up in the top six at least. Um, so it will be another tough test for us. We have got a tough start to the season. 
Uh, but we've been doing phenomenally so far. We're still unbeaten, and hopefully this can continue through this match. So let's move on to my official prediction for the game. Okay, so my prediction for the game, it's going to be a 2-1 win to Hull City, I feel. We're going to have another 2-1 victory under our belts with goals coming from Ozan Tufan. Yes, I think that he'll get a nicely worked goal uh, in there somewhere. Possibly the first scorer in my mind, I see that being. Uh, then another goal for Hull City will be coming from the... Other goal scorer, um, Oscar Estupinian, uh, to add to his goal tally, make that three for the season so far, which will be phenomenal for him. Uh, so yeah, two for Hull City there. And I do think West Brom will reply somewhere within that with a goal from Grant. He just loves to score against us. I think he scored about three or four goals against us last season. So yeah. He loves, to, he loves to score against us, and I think that he'll do that in this game. So that's my prediction. Let me know down in the comments what you think about that, and also what you think the score and uh, who will score will be down there below. But this has been the Hull City Fan Central YouTube channel. Make sure that you like and subscribe so you don't miss any other Hull City content, and I will also have a match day vlog out from the game tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. But this has been the Hull City Fan Central YouTube channel. Goodbye.